this we're not having an expense we're putting it into the factory overhead because it's depreciation on the factory so remember we already allocated out of the factory this 109 this is all the stuff that we allocated here and so the 109 minus all the debits means that we're off our allocation was out of balance by the 3000 that's okay that's an estimate we're gonna have to deal with that though at the end here all right so now we transfer jobs from work in process to finished goods so now we have work in process here the 260 we're gonna we're done with some of that stuff so we're gonna take it out of there and put it into the finished goods so here's our job cost so we we transferred 14 and 15 so here's 14 here's 15. we're gonna say it's not open anymore it's now closed it's now closed so if we take out the calculator here we're going to say that the two jobs that we have are this 186,000 plus the 314,000. Those got allocated out 500,000. Those are allocated out. What's left, just the yellow account of 260. 260, that's what's going to be left in work in process. This and this are going to be allocated out to the 500. How do we do that with a journal entry? We're going to debit the finished goods, 500,000, putting it into 500, and we're going to take it out of work and process. If we look at the general ledger account, what's happening, it's going into finished goods, debit finished goods, 500,000, that's where this number came from. Crediting work and process was at 760,000 minus the 500 credit, brings it to 260, there's the 260. These need to be backed up by the job cost report as they are here. All right, so we're still tied out there. And next item, now we're going to sell. So now we've got stuff in finished goods and we're going to sell it, meaning it's going to move to cost of goods sold. Now, the confusing thing when we sell something, we sold job 14 and they give us a sales price. When we think about a job cost system, the sales price can actually throw us off because we haven't been thinking about the sales price at all. We've been thinking about the cost the whole way through. This sales price has nothing to do with our job cost report. We may have gotten to the sales price by using the job cost report, but the book is usually going to give us a sales price and we're going to record the same journal entry we would if it was just a service company, or at least the first half of it's going to be the same. Meaning we're going to debit, uh, in this case, the cash, 380, and we're going to credit sales. So that's just, we got 380,000 cash. We're going to credit sales. Now, where did we come up with the 380? The book's going to have to give it. We did some kind of markup. We don't, we, they didn't tell us that, right? We came up with the sales price. What we do know, though, is job 14 was sold. Here's job 14. It's no longer closed. It's shipped. It's gone. It's out. And it had a cost of the 186. So what's going to happen? This finished goods, we're going to have to give it up, crediting the 186. And we're going to have to put it into the cost of goods sold. So we're going to debit cost of goods sold, the expense related to the asset that we sold. And we're going to credit the finished goods, taking it out of finished goods. So in terms of our asset accounts, the finished goods is going to go from the 500 down by the 186 to the 314. So here's the 314 there. Here's the 314 here. And of course, and here's going to be the 314 here represented by the job that has been closed but has not yet been shipped out. It's going to be in the finished goods. So if we recap this, then we can see that the 260,000, 260,000 will be in the job cost. That represents the job that's still open, the job that we're representing with the yellow item. It's going to be still open, still in the job cost. That's backing up the work and process account. Now the job cost system is also going to have jobs that have completed and have gone through the process. So we have this job 15 that has closed but has not yet been shipped. Shipped. That's going to be the 314. That's what's going to be in the finished goods here. That's in the finished goods and that's in the finished goods on the trial balance. And then of course we have the job that has been shipped out. So this job has been completed, been shipped out. We've represented that by highlighting the shipped area. That's going to be the 186,000. And that's going to be what the cost of goods sold is representing at this point because it has been shipped out and therefore expensed. All right, so then we have the last piece. We got the adjust for underappreciated or overappreciated factory overhead. So what are we talking about here? If we look at the factory overhead, remember last time we, had, we left off with this 3,000 credit in factory overhead. We applied out 109,000 to our jobs. And then we put all of this stuff that makes up the factory overhead and our estimate was off by the 3,000. We need to make that go to zero because we want to uh, basically have a zero at the end of this time period so that we can make a new estimate next time period. So we just need to make that zero. So how do we make it zero? 
that's a credit. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it and debit it, making it go down. Where are we gonna put the other side? Easiest thing to do, put it into cost of goods sold, crediting cost of goods sold. Now you might be saying, well, that's kind of funny because cost of goods sold is a debit balance of expense account. Why would we be crediting it? We don't normally credit cost of goods sold. And the reason is because uh, it's a small amount. Hopefully it's in material. We're doing this because the estimate was off. It's gonna be off because it's an estimate and we need to, to take it down somewhere. If it's in material, then taking it to cost of goods sold is the easiest thing to do because cost of goods sold is something uh, that will then close out to retained earnings. Unlike some of the permanent accounts, all the permanent accounts, which would not close out. Therefore, once it closes out to retained earnings, it'll be gone. And that'll allow us to basically make a new estimate next time uh, from scratch, from fresh start. So that's going to be the idea. Now, if it was significant, if it's a large amount, then we may have to do something else. But if it's insignificant, meaning it's not going to affect our decision making, then it would seem appropriate to just put it to cost to get sold, sold that being uh, the easiest thing to do. Also, just note that if, if we happen to have gone the other way, meaning that we ended up with a debit of like 3000 we would do the same thing. We would make it go to zero. We're going to do whatever we need to do to make it go to zero. And in this case, it would be that would be a credit to make it go to zero. And then we would debit cost of goods sold. Once again, doing whatever we need to do to make it go to zero as long as it's an immaterial amount. No effect on the job cost system of this. We still have the 260 tying out to the 260 because the factory overhead, we're just dealing with the factory overhead, not the work in process, not the finished goods at that point.